alienation of whole communities. The blame, as Diane Abbott explained earlier, that is laid at the door of black and ethnic minority people. The blame that is laid on migrants, on refugees and asylum seekers must be called out loudly. We have to keep calling it out loudly at every turn. I want to send a message of solidarity to all the migrant workers who make the NHS what it is and our local services. Two years ago I was violently attacked. I had my right eye fractured. If it wasn't for Mr Khan at my local hospital down in Bromley who treated me, Here's a refugee from Iraq, the nurse from Finland, both of whom were racially abused. And it must be about practical solidarity at every level, with workers, with communities, with young people. And trade union work must be understood as a global movement with global responsibilities. We cannot be silent, and I am proud of a union that is against war, that is against imperialism, and is for all refugees and everyone fleeing conflict and fleeing climate disaster. They need decent pay rise and a decent working conditions. But we must now all come together to make sure that we fight against racism. Refugees leave their countries because there's conflict, they're, they're war-torn. Some of the conflicts are caused by Western countries. Refugees contribute a lot to the economy. They don't really um, cause any problems as far as the economy is concerned, as far as, as far as society is concerned. Four years there have been no justice for the Windrush generation, for the survivors and their families. The compensation scheme, which was meant to help them to move on with their lives, has failed. Pretty Patel, every other week, says, we are right in the wrongs. Is she right in the wrongs? No. Is Priti Patel right in the wrongs? No. We need to think about the police and crime sentencing bill. A bill that has been created that people like us who organise protests like this can go to prison for 10 years. We also need to talk about the Nationality and Borders Bill, a bill that has been created to take my nationality away, even though I'm a British citizen, because I might be seen as a threat to the government. Yes, I experience racism on a daily basis. A system that shows that her beauty is not something for you to be able to celebrate. And we are seen to conform into society that isn't wanting us to be here. Why do you think it's important to campaign against racism? Racism is a, is a symptom of capitalism that is really serious and it links up with a lot of different struggles today. We stand up against racism, we stand against uh, like uh, anti-LGBT uh, homophobia, we, we stand up against every oppression and racism is a big part of that. And what we see today is uh, pretty Patel in government today pitting through the police and crime sentencing bill, which is something that is used to suppress movements like Black Lives Matter, Extinction Rebellion, against climate change, um, and and also giving more powers to the police and the police are a known racist tool that are used against black people used against minorities used against refugees violently we need to fight against racism as much as possible because we want a better society for future people we have a government that pays lip service to equality while actively and racistly disempowering people and worsening inequality and that structural racism is embedded in our workplaces and our institutions, including colleges and universities. When you see racism, you need to speak out about it. When you see racism, it's cancerous. But as a black woman, but we have to talk about how racism intersects with other forms of oppression. So when we talk about racism, we have to be talking about the issues that affect black women, because we know that when you have someone who's racist, that you also know someone is sexist, someone is homophobic, someone is um, racist against uh, our GRT community. We know that someone um, is also discriminates against people on the on the basis of their disability or their impairment. So let's be intersectional when we talk about anti-racism. Let's make sure that we talk about the experiences of black women. It's for equality in pay because we have racist pay gaps in higher education according to the employer's body's own figures. A racist pay gap of 17% between black and white staff. That intersects with the gender pay gap of around 15.5% on average and 9% disability pay gap. Add to that that we know of the more than 1 million people on zero hours 
contract, you are more likely to be on a zero hours contract with no security of work if you are a black woman, if you are an Asian woman. The inequality is at every level. And being asked to finish, I'm going to just say that in further education it is no better. There are precisely zero senior leaders at the national level who are not white. So we make noise every day, but we make sure this is key to our industrial fight and our social and political fight. Power to everybody here. Let's keep making that noise, let's keep calling it out, and let's stand up for justice. Thank you.